We continue our conversation with Jerry Bader, communications director with Media Trackers. Uh, Jerry, we were talking earlier about the the poll numbers, the latest poll numbers. Do you see those numbers changing at all in, up, up to Election Day? Uh, that is, you know, uh, do they move between now and Election Day? Don't know. But I, I would almost have to think so because it will be amazing to me. Now, let's just take the last poll it's from a national organization, and it's an online poll, and you, you can raise some questions about that. But it shows. Uh, Tammy Baldwin, incumbent Democratic senator, with a 15-point lead over Republican Leah Vukmir, and I think that poll showed a, a, like three a three-point lead, yeah, for uh, Tony Evers over Scott Walker. So uh, you look at that, and you have a Democrat with a 15-point lead and a Democrat with a three-point lead, and others show, you know, Baldwin with a 10-point lead. And Walker with a slight lead. So you know, and it, you know, even if you just average those out, that is really mind-boggling. And I can't imagine a scenario where Tammy Baldwin wins in a blowout and Scott Walker wins or loses a close, you know, a very close race. So I, I don't know if we're going to see movement. But man, if that plays out and we see on election night what we're seeing right now, I think that's going to be without precedent in Wisconsin politics. The race for the Senate. Um, both candidates have a, a, a perception problem. Uh, Leah Vukmir battling the pre existing condition issue. Tammy Baldwin still battling the Toma VA issue. Uh, which one plays bigger in the minds of voters? I think uh, pre existing pre conditions. I really think that's true. And here's, here's where I think that Baldwin successfully dealt with the, the Toma VA scandal is when the family of the deceased veteran, uh, you know, those very emotion-packed ads defending Tammy Baldwin, saying, hey, you know, we don't want this being used as politics. And you saw at least some of the ads that Leigh Vukmir ran after that stopped mentioning that and just said all veterans were impacted by this. And she was asked, well, why didn't you take that down after the family came out? And she said, well, because it's a bigger issue than, than just one person. I, I personally think those Baldwin ads, uh, ads, excuse me, were very powerful in diffusing that to a degree at least. But I think in terms of what voters are thinking about, I will again go back to pre-existing conditions is top of mind awareness right now. Mm -hmm. How important is it for the Democrats to get Glenn Grothman's seat? I don't know. Is there even an outside chance? Well, okay. So of course, first let's start with the second question okay. first. Uh, Sabato's crystal ball as of this morning has that likely Republican, not safe Republican, which you would expect that district to be, that bright red 6th Congressional District. Uh, you know, it, it is possible that Dan Cole is spending an awful lot of money, and I think they're awful effective ads. It would be a stunning upset. I think I, I would go with likely Republican. You know, the options are safe Republican, leans Republican, or likely Republican. I'd say it's likely Republican. Uh, that would be something of an upset. Do they need it to take the House of Representatives? Probably not. But the way that you the way you do that, the way you get a House back, is to pick up seats you're not expected to. Mm -hmm. Is Mike Gallagher safe? If he's not. If Mike Gallagher isn't safe, then you're going to know it was a really bad night for Republicans in Wisconsin. Bo Lejoy's largely unknown. I mean, David and Goliath, and you know, as you are well aware, in terms of the advertising that's going on in television in the Green Bay market. So I would think that Mike Gallagher is very, very safe. We have been watching the political commercials over the past month or so. Everyone says that they're sick of watching political commercials. It, it, it's the back and forth. We have never seen anything like this in, in the past, in past elections. Is this the new norm in American politics? It's the new norm until it gets worse. I mean, yeah, I, you know, you, uh, and we all know how this works. Well, I hate those ads. I hate those negative ads. You hear that from people, right, Tom, again and again and again and again. Why do they do them? Because they work. Because they, in fact, are effective. You can't unilaterally disarm. Candidates have tried it. I'm going to take the high road, and I'm going to get the tower beat out of me. It doesn't work. And, um, it, it's, it, and I think especially, quite honestly, in this age, where and I, I and others, of course, refer to it as tribalism, it plays to a super hyper-polarized electorate, which we have right now. 
to have the other team get beat up. It's almost like sm talking smack in sports. And I think because of that, it's more effective than ever. Do you see this election as a referendum on Donald Trump? I, I hate to punt on this, but okay, it should be. President Trump thinks it is. I'm on the ballot. Vote for me. Vote for me. By the way, I think a brilliant move on his part to say that. Uh, we will find out in the results if that was the case. I think to a degree, yes. I think there could be, you look at Wisconsin, a state he wasn't supposed to carry, and that's because people who traditionally voted Democrat uh, are a big part of why he carried Wisconsin. They voted for the president. Do how, what percentage of them have buyer's remorse? You know, Democrats like, man, you know, I wanted to change. I had no idea it was going to be like this. Uh, I think to a degree, but I don't, I honestly don't know. And I thought it was going to be, I thought this election was going to be all about President Trump. It doesn't really feel that way. Is he, is he top of mind in terms of what you're thinking about when you go to the polls? I think so. I, I think what Democrats have done masterfully, and I'll say it one more time, the pre-existing conditions. I think that's what's driving everyone right now. That's the issue. Jerry Bader from MediaTrackers.org. Thanks very much for joining us. You bet. If you have a newsmaker in your town you think should be on this program, let us know. Send us an email at tips at wearegreenbay.com or message us on Facebook. And be sure to join us once again Sunday morning at 730. Until then, have a great day.